Photosynthesis happens in chlorophyll, in chloroplasts, in plant cells to provide food for a plant. Here's the word and balanced chemical equation for it. And as energy is needed in the form of light to make this reaction happen, this is an endothermic reaction. The glucose made from photosynthesis is used for respiration or is turned into starch or fat as a store of energy. Cellulose is used to produce cell walls and amino acids are used for synthesizing proteins. The rate of photosynthesis increases with higher temperature, unless it's so high that enzyme denaturing occurs, increasing light intensity or increasing CO2 concentration. Any one of these can be a limiting factor, by the way. For example, even if there's lots of carbon dioxide and it's warm, if there's not enough light, the rate of photosynthesis will be limited by this. In other words, it doesn't matter how much you increase the other two, it won't get any faster. A graph might look like this. Before the graph plateaus, levels out, the variable on the x-axis has to be the limiting factor. After, it isn't. It must be one of the other two instead. Sometimes you'll have two lines, for example, for different temperatures, and that shows that temperature must be the limiting factor. Here's the practical on this. We can measure the rate of photosynthesis by submerging pondweed in an inverted measuring cylinder. We measure the volume of oxygen made over time. We can instead count the bubbles, but that's less accurate. The independent variable could be the light intensity, and that's changed by varying the distance from the light source, for example, a lamp. However, light intensity follows an inverse square relationship. In other words, if you double the distance, the light intensity quarters, three times further, one ninth of the intensity. So therefore, the rate of photosynthesis should also follow suit. Every cell, bar red blood cells, has mitochondria, the site of respiration. Respiration takes place in every organism to provide energy for other chemical reactions to take place and also for movement and warmth. Aerobic respiration means with oxygen. Here's the word and balanced chemical equations. As you can hopefully see, it's the opposite of photosynthesis. During exercise, your breathing rate and heart rate rise to increase the rate at which oxygen is delivered to your cells for respiration. Anaerobic respiration occurs when there's a lack of oxygen. Glucose is instead converted straight into lactic acid, which releases some energy but less than aerobic respiration does. This is what you feel when your muscles ache during intense exercise. This poison can't stay in your body, so there is an oxygen debt built up. That means more oxygen is needed afterward to break down this lactic acid in the liver, where it's turned back into glucose. That's why your breathing rate and heart rate take some time to return to normal after exercise. Plant and yeast cells can respire anaerobically, but slightly differently. Instead, glucose is turned into ethanol and carbon dioxide. That's why yeast is used when baking. The CO2 bubbles made cause the bread or cake to rise. This is also called fermentation. It's also used to make alcoholic drinks as ethanol is produced. Metabolism is defined as the sum of all reactions in a cell or organism. These can include respiration, conversion of glucose into starch, glycogen and cellulose, fatty acids and glycerol are built up into lipids and also the breakdown of excess proteins. So I hope you found that helpful. Leave a like and a comment if you did. And click on the card to take you to the playlist for all of the papers. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge.